Ezekiel 33.3. All right. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha are books that were hidden away and they used to exist in the 1611 King James Bible. As a matter of fact, in the King James Bible, between the Old Testament and the New Testament, so at the end of Malachi, before we went into Matthew, there used to exist 14 books that were called the Apocrypha. So what is the Apocrypha? Apocrypha, the word itself, it is a biblical or related writings not forming the accepted canon of scripture. In other words, these were supposed to be non-authorized writings by the church. If we take a look, we can see Apocrypha is late Middle English. It comes from the Latin Apocrypha Scripta, meaning hidden writings. And it goes back to a Greek word that is Apocryptine, meaning hide away. So I started my investigation first by taking a look at the Encyclopedia Britannica. So here we are looking at the word Apocrypha. So again, we can see Apocrytine, which means to hide away. It says in biblical literature, works outside an accepted canon of scripture. The history of the term's use indicates that it referred to a body of esoteric writings that were at first prized, later tolerated, and then finally excluded. In its broadcast sense, Apocrypha has came to mean any writings of dubious authority. These were the books of the Apocrypha. So it started first after Malachi with 1st Esdras, and then it went into 2nd Esdras. Following that, the book of Tobit, then the book of Judith, and then we have another book of Esther. So in the Old Testament, we had the book of Esther, but here we had another Esther. So this was also titled, The Rest of the Chapters of the Book of Esther, which are found neither in Hebrew or Chalde, so Chaldean, Babylonian. Then we had a book called The Wisdom of Solomon. Then we had Ecclesiasticus. Then it was also titled The Wisdom of Jephus, the son of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus. I think in some versions I've actually seen the book of Sirach. And we also have the book of Baruch. Now what I find interesting here is if we take a look at the Encyclopedia Britannica again, the first book of Esdras, notice it's not Ezra, it's Esdras. It says the first book of Esdras, also called Greek Ezra, abbreviation first Esdras, apocryphal work, that was included in the canon of the Septuagint, that's the Greek version of the Bible, but is not a part of any modern biblical canon. It is called Greek Ezra by modern scholars to distinguish it from the Old Testament book of Ezra written in Hebrew. Originally written in Aramaic or Hebrew, First Esdras has survived only in Greek and in a Latin translation made from the Greek. Okay, so when we look at the Hebrew name, the Hebrew name Ezra is the name Esdras in the Greek. So here's where you can find a copy of the Greek Septuagint translated. It's a bridged version where you can see the Greek on one side and the English on the other. And you'll notice here I have this arrow pointing down to first as draws. So first as draws is the same as what you would find in the Apocrypha. So if you're looking in the King James Version, the 1611, you would find in those books that were sitting between Malachi and Matthew, 1st Esdras was the first book of the Apocrypha, and it matched exactly what was inside of 1st Esdras in the Greek Septuagint. This is a picture of 1st Esdras in the Apocrypha. So you'll notice that in a lot of places you'll see S's, which are F's, or written as F's because it's written in an Old English kind of a type. So here we can see Josiah's held the feast of the Passover in Jerusalem, and so on and so on. And then I'll flick over here, and I'll take a look at 1st Esdras in the Greek Septuagint, and it says, and Josiah's held a feast of the Passover in Jerusalem, and then so on. So here we can see it's a perfect match. So in other words, these hidden books... These books weren't hidden to the Greek mind because in the Greek Septuagint, they would know that 1st Esdras was a book in the Greek Septuagint before 2nd Esdras. So 2nd Esdras is actually the book of Esdras that we would look at today. Not in the Apocrypha, but when we're looking at the Septuagint. The Septuagint 2nd Esdras is actually what we refer to as the book of Ezra in the Old Testament. 
So we had first Esdras, second Esdras in the Apocrypha, Tobit, Judith, Esther, Wisdom of Solomon, Ecclesiasticus, and then Baruch. If we take a look at the table of contents of the Greek Septuagint, we have a lot of these books from the Apocrypha in the normal Greek Septuagint. Notice, we've got books such as Maccabees 1, Maccabees 2, Maccabees 3, we've got Tobit, we've got Esdras 1 and 2, we've got Baruch, and if you notice, you'll also see that the book of Kings and the book of Samuel, they're titled differently and numbered differently. We actually have Kings 1, 2, 3, and then 4. So the book of Samuel was just called 1 Kings, and then Samuel 2, or 2 Samuel, sorry, was 2 Kings. So here's some other books from the Apocrypha. We've got the Prayer of Azariah, titled The Song of the Three Holy Children, which followeth in the third chapter of Daniel after this place. And they walked in the midst of fire, praising God and blessing the Lord. That which followeth is not in Hebrew, to wit, then Azarus stood up unto these words and Nebuchadnezzar. So you can see we have a different spelling here for Nebuchadnezzar. Next book we have is Susanna. Susanna was also titled The History of Susanna, set apart from the beginning of Daniel because it's not in Hebrew as neither the narration of Bel and the dragon. So you'll see this actually written in the Apocrypha. That's where I'm grabbing this from. And then we have the book Bel and the Dragon, also titled The History of the Destruction of Bel and the Dragon, cut off from the end of Daniel. This is actually a really good read. And we have The Prayer of Manasseh, titled the prayer of Manassas, king of Judah, when he was holding capture in Babylon. Finally, we have the last two books of the Apocrypha, 1st Maccabees and 2nd Maccabees, and following 2nd Maccabees, that's when you would normally get to the New Testament, and then you would get into the first gospel book, the book of Matthew. Did you know the Catholic Vulgate Bible has the books of Maccabees included? Here's my source, mycatholic.life slash Bible. It says right here on the top of the page, the following four translations of the Bible are approved for Catholic use and are among the most commonly used translations. If you scroll down actually on this page, you can find the different books of the Catholic Vulgate and they break them down into sections. Interestingly enough though, these authorized books, you'll find amongst them, first and second Maccabees. If you're surprised by this, you probably don't have too many Catholic friends because Catholics who have a Catholic Vulgate or a Latin Vulgate because it was originally written in Latin, these books were included. So isn't it kind of interesting? What's going on here? Maybe you should take a look at some of these hidden books. I know that a lot of disciples swear by the translations done in the King James Version and they will accept no other, but isn't it strange that the Apocrypha was removed from the King James Version? I've shown you that in the 1611 King James Version, you had the books of the Apocrypha, these 14 books that sat between Malachi and Matthew. Why was it good enough for King James, but then for subsequent readers, it was removed? Like I said, it used to sit between the Old and New Testament and then suddenly disappeared. Now keep this in mind. The 1611 King James Bible was obviously written in 1611. However, we're sitting here now in 2020. So sometime in approximately the last 400 years, these books just kind of disappeared. If you take a look here, here's an old copy of the Bible. The British Family Bible, Exposition and Commentary on the Holy Scriptures, containing the sacred text of the Old and New Testaments. And look right here, with the Apocrypha at large. So clearly, this was included in publications after the 1611 King James Bible. This particular Bible was published in London. Here's another example. Family Bible, containing the Old and New Testaments, Apocrypha, Concordance, and Psalms. Again, this is a newer Bible, obviously prior to the 1900s. However, what do we notice here? The Apocrypha was still there. So we went from the 1600s, and here we go just about to 1900, and then suddenly we still see the Apocrypha, but our modern versions, they were removed. So from my research, it looks like the Apocrypha was removed in what appears to be around the last, I'd say, 150 years. Holy Bible, containing the Old and New Testaments with the Apocrypha, translated out of the original tongues by special command of King James I of England. 
Again, here's another example of an old Bible where we can see the Apocrypha was concluded. So it was my understanding that the Bible wasn't supposed to be added to or text to be removed, but we can clearly see entire books were hidden. And the word Apocrypha means hidden. I discovered a few reasons why that might be, and stay tuned for upcoming videos where I will quote not only from the New and Old Testament, but unveil some of what was hidden that I found out studying from the Apocrypha over the years. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Brothers and sisters, the sword is coming. If you hear the watchman's call, please repent and seek out Jesus Christ. There is still time.